Welcome to the Organizational Pill. Episode 7. 5 Minutes of Great Knowledge for Change Consultants Who Want to Influence the World. Created by Eric R. Buhler, author of the best-selling book, Leading Exponential Change. Today we will talk about how organizational health empowers enterprise agility. Most companies I know want to increase their levels of agility and resilience in order to adapt to market disruptions. They usually try to achieve this by expanding the agile mindset, adding some practices, or trying to implement the Scrum framework. Many organizations start with the software teams and then expand the concepts to the rest of the company. Imagine you are a change consultant trying to help a bank. One day, you are asked for ideas to help increase the levels of agility in the financial department. You probably think, it won't be challenging as I have done it with many software teams before. That day a leader also asks you, do you know if Kanban or the Scrum framework work in the financial department? Many change consultants would reply by saying, yes, no, or it depends. From my perspective, the most important thing is the leader's implicit premise that the framework will be getting better outcomes than in other competing companies. There is also something to consider when you want to increase the agility of the whole company. Is change going to be sustainable? You need to make sure the leader understands that whatever is done should not deteriorate organizational health. Otherwise, whatever is done will not be sustainable in the long term. I believe that organizational health is psychological safety, how people feel about talking freely and making decisions in the company, plus the creation of sustainable business value in perpetuity. The word perpetuity is crucial as it represents a behavior or practice that needs to be maintained over time. For example, making people work long hours to meet a deadline or not having enough quality in something you build, if it is not done in a controlled and premeditated way could make you get quick results but will not be sustainable. Organizational health and psychological safety are key if you want to deal with continuous change and adaptation. In my opinion, when a non-experienced leader thinks of Agile, or wanted to add new ways of working, she generally thinks of two things. The first one, is about going faster. The second one, is their belief that the same practices and processes can be established and normalized across all circumstances, departments, and people. If you are working with a large firm that has been operating under the assumption that they have a great product and that customers will always buy it, then they might also assume that the new framework to be implemented will work well everywhere, as a result of standardizing everything they do. This is an extension of the factory mindset, applied to the way things are done, but it is clear that they will not work very well here. When we are talking about enterprise agility, we need to make sure the leader focuses on how to continuously create a competitive advantage and to make this sustainable. That is why I created a very specific definition of what enterprise agility is. Having a clear statement like this allows any company to align its employees with a way of thinking. As you can see, the first part of the definition indicates what you want to achieve, but the second part is crucial. Everything that is done must maintain or increase organizational health. And this is key when a company faces accelerated change. For every decision or action to be taken, the leader must ask an important question. How will this maintain or improve organizational health? Let me give you an example of what I have in mind and show you a framework you can use. Any company needs to do four things in order to survive. The first one is to increase revenue. This means increasing sales to new or existing customers in order to have a bigger market share. The second one is to focus on protecting the current revenue. These are improvements and incremental innovation to sustain the current market figures. The third part of the quadrant is to avoid costs. This means costs that the company is not incurring but may do in the future. Finally, it is all about reducing some of the costs that the company is currently incurring. Many times I ask leaders or product owners to place product features or decisions in the most appropriate quadrant. Once they do it, we add a new dimension, 
which is organizational health. Each of the decisions or features must be located somewhere in the quadrant and prove that they will maintain or increase organizational health. If this is not the case, then they should rethink or seek another solution for the problem that supports better levels of organizational health. In my perspective, any competitive advantage is not just about frameworks, but about initially helping individuals to get high levels of mental agility to reframe problems. The premise of leading exponential change is that if employees do not have high levels of mental agility, then the organization will not be able to adapt to accelerated change, even if they have the right practices and frameworks in place. Do you agree with me? In the next episode, I will show you many innovative techniques to increase mental agility. If you enjoyed it, share it with your network. In the meantime, it might be a good idea to grab a copy of Leading Exponential Change to go beyond Agile and Scrum. See you soon.